With the arrival of iPad OS 15, I thought I'd take a look at some of the new features that I feel are going to be little bits of game changers for educators in the classroom. So if you've got an iPad, you might want to just check out some of these things that we'll go into more detail with over time as we start to explore exactly what we can do with each of these features. Now I'm going to get started with one that I think is possibly the, the best feature on the iPad for productivity, certainly for educators, um, as they're using their device, and that's split screen mode. Now, split screen mode has been around for a while, and you've been able to do it by tapping and holding on your apps and, and bringing up screens. It's always been one where I've been training uh, staff on doing this, or my students, that it's a bit fiddly at times, and Apple have obviously taken it on board and come up with a new system for doing it. Now, you'll notice on my screen there are three dots at the top and this is your quick access to just instigating split screen. So if I go ahead and tap on those three dots, you'll see it brings up those different versions. So I've got full screen, split screen with the bit down the middle, or that hover bar that you can have um, to have that screen kind of lay over the top. If I go split screen, it gives me the option to choose another app, notes for example, and I'm straight into that. So no need to kind of drag and drop and hold and, and allow the split screen camera, just a couple of taps and you're into it. If at any point you want to change anything, again, you've got three dots on either side now. If I want to change this, I can choose if I want to go full screen, have that just as that kind of hover over bar. Or obviously I can change that altogether and, and bring in a completely new app. So if I wanted to bring, uh, let's say, a, a different Safari page up, I can just drag that in, drop that in that space, same as before. So there we go. Split screen, really, really useful, great way to just pop into it to make that whole process a lot easier. You'll also notice in certain applications, as you're playing around with this, you'll have that option to just have that new window. You can then start to have this kind of stack of web pages that you might want to jump between down the bottom here. Again, just working on that productivity. Lots of, lots of different ways to use it. Okay. So let's just look at something else then, and something which I absolutely love. I've, I've really, really transformed how I use my iPad in the use of this app, and that is through Notes, one of the simplest applications, but so, so powerful for lots and lots of things. And with iPad OS 15, there is a new feature, and that is Quick Notes. And Quick Notes just allows me to, either with my finger or with an Apple Pencil, drag up from the bottom right corner. You'll notice now I get this note appear, and it is app aware. So therefore, because I'm in a website at the moment, you'll notice it's already copied this link for me and I can add that link into my note. So straight away, I could be doing some research, for example, start to put together a note, add in text if I want to do some drawings. I've got all of those cool features that are still there and it's just on that screen whilst I still have the function of the website as well. As soon as you tap done, it disappears, it's gone, don't need to worry about it anymore, but I will be able to find that in the Notes app if I jump into the Notes app. And here we are. So here's my Notes app. If I just jump back to my main page, here's Quick Notes, there's a whole new section. And this is that note I just started there. So then I get the full functionality of the Notes app to do that. So really, really quick and easy way to kind of just jump between being productive and being able to make those notes. Now you'll also notice in the bottom corner here, is that note is always kind of there for if I want to use it. So simply just by, oops, I'll go back one step. There we go. Because it's relevant to that page I'm on, that note is in that bottom corner. If I just want to carry on making some notes, it's there for me to use whenever I need to use it. So really, really useful kind of function in having that note on the screen. Okay, so the next one to look at then is the focus mode. And focus is my control center and you'll notice here I've got a making videos focus on and I'm going to go ahead and tap on this and you'll see that I have some additional ones that I can choose from personal maybe work um, do not disturb in general or I can add a whole new focus and we'll go into this in another video go into the, the details about the whole way to do this but it's just really useful if you are using your device in the classroom you could set it to teaching mode then you could set it to like break time mode or lunchtime mode where you might want to have emails pop in or you know going home or before work you know all sorts of things that you can set and it just means that you're just a little bit more focused you know restricting the people that can contact you during those times um, and the notifications that might pop up so again really really nice and simple way to use it 
Now, whilst we're on that uh, home screen at the moment, let's just have a look at some of those other things. You'll notice on my screen, I've got some widgets on the screen. That's something which is now being added in. Um, it's been on the, the phone um, for the, the last um, iPad, uh, sorry, iPhone update that came out. And we've now got it on our iPads as well. So again, we can now start to restructure this. We'll go into more details about all of this, but fundamentally, if I tap on the screen, you see the option to plus at the top. Gives me the option of lots of widgets here, lots of different things that you can add in. Again, personalizing your device in a way that works for you. Personally, having quick access to my files is gonna be really, really useful. So I can choose that view, big screen. I'm gonna go for that big widget. And now I've kind of got quick access to some of those files that I might use all the time. And again, you can move them around on the page just to suit your needs and how you want to use your device. The whole personalization of the device, fantastic, really gonna make us more productive and efficient as we're working. Now, another thing to think about efficiency and great ways to work is the live text in photos. Now, this is a great feature. It's just gonna allow me to scan pictures and start to pick out the text which is in there to find out more information. Again, we'll do videos on this to go into more detail, but just as an example, Here's a photo that I've got of some books. Um, so again, thinking about you know being in a library, you've taken some photos of some books, you, you might need to you know, find out a little bit more about them at another time. You'll notice now that I can tap on that picture and I can select that text and it's gonna give me that additional information about, um, about the book. So if I just grab this text here, you'll notice I now get those select bars that you'll be used to using on other applications where the text is on the screen. But remember, this is just a photo. And then I get those additional options as you would be used to seeing, like in Safari or in Pages, etc. So I've got Speak Selection, I could translate this, I can look up the information or select it and copy it, put it into you know a reading list somewhere else that I might want to use. So all of those functions are there, really, really great. And it's gonna select all of that stuff and find out all of that information. As an example here, I've searched for that title because I've taken a photo of it. I can now go to a website and get some more information about it. So live text in photos, really, really good. And it also works if you're taking screenshots of things. Just again, just as an example, here's a, a screenshot of some text um, that, I, that I've had. And again, you'll notice the little icon down the bottom here it turns all of this now into editable text so that I can select this. And then again, brings me up those options of, of spelling and speak selection and all those sorts of things. So again, really, really handy. And again, we'll look at this in other videos in more detail and specifics of how you might use this in your classroom. Last couple of things to just highlight some really, really nice new features um, in Maps. So if I jump into the Maps, there's uh, lots of updates in here in terms of different views, etc., and for, for travel. But a couple of things for the classroom that I think are really good. We now can zoom right out and easily go into Globe View. And again, I know I've worked with lots of teachers uh, over the last few years, and, and Globe View is something that, that people really like because you know having that ability to search around the globe, look at time zones and look at light and dark and all of those different things. So really, really useful there, all based in one application. And something else which is great is I can also have this Explore mode. Now, why I really love Explore mode is because where I live, uh, is still two-dimensional. We're still technically flat earth by where I live. But actually, when I now go into explore mode and I tilt the screen, I do get a 3D representation. And just as an idea here straight away, none of those buildings have any detail on them. So already I'm starting to think about, well, if you were redesigning the town, if you wanted to kind of decorate the buildings, there's different activities straight away that I could think of. Take a screenshot, draw over the top, what, what buildings would you like to see in this area, etc. Because you've kind of got that 3D representation on your device. So again, just a, a simple, quick idea of some of the things that you can do. So there we go. That was just a quick overview of some of the updates in iPad OS 15 and how I'm thinking about for a teacher, they could be really, really useful. I'd love to hear your comments in the chat window. Um, if you've got anything you'd like to share, please do share away um, and share some of the things that you think you can do with these updates as well.